In this video, we, we will be discussing the differences between protostomes and deuterostomes. So in triploblastic animals, the fate of the blastopore and the location of the mesoderm determines whether or not an animal is a protostome or a deuterostome. And if you look at this figure right here, that's just detailing what we're about to talk about, but some the three different ways that protostomes can be differentiated from deuterostomes. The first of which is cleavage. So cleavage at the eight cell stage in protostomes is going to be spiral indeterminate. Cleavage at the eight, so eight cell stage in deuterostomes is going to be radial and indeterminate. So what does this mean? Determinate means that in the case of protostomes, each cell already has a dedicated job. So if we remove one of the eight cells, the embryo will be either missing a body part or missing some major life function because each cell already has a de determined role. And then for protostomes, we're gonna see spiral cleavage, meaning that the cells divide in an overlapping fashion and we cannot draw a line between the nuclei. For deuterostomes, with radial and indeterminate cleavage, we're going to see that these eight cells do not have their roles already determined. So they can go in and if we remove one of the eight cells, the other seven cells will be able to compensate for that eighth cell and the embryo can still develop normally. And then they also, this radial cleavage means that the cells are gonna divide in straight lines so we can draw a line between the nuclei. The other major difference, or one of the other major differences between protostomes and deuterostomes is in seal formation. In protostomes, solid masses of mesoderm will, will split apart and form the coelom. These masses lie on either side of the blastopore, just inside of the archanteron, the lining of the gastrula. And so if you look at this figure on the left, you'll see this is for protostomes. And so they're basically gonna form two hard little solid masses um, right inside the edge of the gastrula. And then for deuterostomes, the folds of the archanteron form the coelom. And so if you look at this figure, the right side of this figure, you're gonna see little, but essentially the archanteron pinches off and that is what eventually becomes the coelom. And then the final major difference between protostomes and deuterostomes comes down to the fate of the blastopore. And so the blastopore is the opening of the gastrula. And so if you recall, um, as has been discussed in previous videos, the gastrula is formed when the cell, the blastula, the ball of cells, folds in on itself in a process called gastrulation. And so the blastopore is the opening of that gastrula that's been created. And in protostomes, the gastrula becomes the mouth of the animal. And in deuterostomes, the gastrula becomes the anus of the animal. And the other end of that tube for both got protostomes and deuterostomes will become whatever the blastopore is not. Um, and as a fun fact, humans are deuterostomes. So now to discuss the fate of the coelom and body plans. So we've already discussed the fate of the coelom for, um, for protostomes and deuterostomes in terms of whether the mouth or the anus develops first, but now to go a little bit more deeper into the coelom, the coelom or body cavity, which is formed by the mesoderm, has three different fates. So there's three essentially different types of animals um, in which we can see coelom, the coelom do different things. So we can see coelomates in which the coelom is lined strictly by mesoderm. So that would be in the figure on the right, um, that would be A, this top part. So if you'll notice, um, there's only red, which in this figure indicates mesoderm, surrounding the coelom, and um, that would be what we would consider to be a true coelomate. And then there's a pseudocoelomate in which the coelom is lined by endoderm and mesoderm. So in this figure, um, section B, you'll notice that the inside of the, or the inner part of the coelom is lined by endoderm, whereas mesoderm still forms the outside layer encasing the coelom. And then there's an acelomate. And acelomates lack a body cavity or a coelom altogether between the wall of their digestive tract and the body covering. And if you'll notice by looking at this planarian in, um, at the bottom of this figure, fig part C, it essentially they essentially just are completely solid. They don't have um, this empty body cavity. 
I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.